This is the new Aston Martin Vantage, 656 horsepower, 202 miles an hour, 165,000 pounds, and a complete step change for Aston Martin sports car. So I need to do a clever intro, but I've been looking through the old motoring journalist handbook, and the guidelines for Aston Martin are all just James Bond. I mean, kill me now. So, okay, I'll use Aston Martin's own literature. Let me read some of it to you. Vantage, a name ravished in racing royalty, hardwired with the ability to get your heart racing, forged in the fires of the limit. Well, I can't use that because I'm not clinically insane and I assume you're not either. So instead, we're gonna to have to go old school. You know the thing, montage, tire smoke. Slow-mos. Me making silly noises. <laughs> but we will get to the crux of the issue. Have Aston Martin built a no excuses Vantage and can this thing really stand toe to toe with a 911 Turbo? To do this, we're near Seville on some mighty roads. But let's begin on the Monte Blanco circuit, if for no other reason than to laugh at me in an open face helmet. Damn you, Aston Martin. So all the signs are that the Vantage is gonna be a massive, massive step on from the previous version. We saw them do a similarly thorough job with DB12, but this is more exciting, isn't it? Because it's, it's their pure sports car. Now, the power, 30% more power, is the headline, but it's the detail work that they've done to the chassis that particularly interests me. Aston has gone through the Vantage and changed, well, lots of stuff. The aluminium chassis is strengthened with a new front body cross member, which has been moved rearwards to increase mounting point stiffness for the double wishbone front suspension. There's a stiffer and lighter strut brace to increase lateral stiffness and a new and more substantial shear panel. At the rear, there's another strut brace and the Vantage benefits from stiffer new under trays too. It also adopts more sophisticated Bilstein DTX dampers, similar to those used on the Porsche 992. There's an E-diff, the eight-speed auto box has a shorter final drive and faster shifts. It really is a thorough, almost radical update. So what does it feel like? Well, initially, the power does dominate the experience because this thing is so quick. But there's more to it than that. I'm just in sport mode now. Already, the car feels stiff structurally but also stiff in terms of the dampers i turn it up to sport plus we have sport sport plus and track it's really aggressive we obviously started on the track just to get the shock and awe of the performance of the ultimate grip handling and you can tell it's a much more aggressive proposition of the old one of course, they can't completely defy physics. You know it's quite a chunky car, but the flip side is the balance is really good. I've still got the traction control activated, but it's already showing me that front engine rear drive balance that's just at the core of what an Aston Martin's all about. So signs are good. The Vantage feels lunatic fast and also surprisingly precise. In fact, I wonder if the updated look sells the car short. I like the 177 inspired front end and the big openings required to cool that mighty AMG source motor, but somehow I think Aston could have turned it up a bit more. Maybe it needs to be called a Vantage S and have an F1 edition style wing with a cleaner touring package for those who prefer understatement. Anyway, soon we will delve into its trick new adjustable traction control and yes, turn it off altogether, but first, we should probably drive this thing on the public highway. We come to the road in search of bumps and all that real world stuff, but we're in Spain, which is not like the real world anywhere else. So I think this road is smoother than the Monte Blanco circuit. But all the subtleties that you just lose on the track, because you're immediately on the limit or over the limit, you can start to feel on the road and the car actually feels I think a lot more impressive it's really good fun on the track just because of the balance and the power effectively but on the road some of that detail work that they've been talking about starts to come through 
the ride quality, I have to say, when we just came out of the track was a bit knobbly. It's going to be interesting, even in the standard sport mode, it's going to be interesting in the UK and other less fantastically surface roads to see how that feels. But on here, I can ramp it up to Sport Plus, no problem at all. And actually there's still some lean in the car, which is nice because it makes it feel predictable and linear. You don't get a really nervous turn in. You've got something to, to build confidence in. A bit of weight transfer is, is really good in that respect. So I can just really feel what the chassis is doing, that tiny little bit of steering input. The steering's really clean and nice. And there's just a, a greater level of sophistication, absolutely, than the previous gen car. It does feel just a different animal, really. So there's a newfound sophistication and agility, but it's underpinned by the classical front engine rear drive balance. And so I can tip it into a corner, and as I get on the power, I can almost feel the car. I need less and less steering angle. It's not sliding, but it's like it's unraveling the road for you with the throttle, which is a really nice feeling. And then, should you want to, you could go the next stage further and start to bully and tease the car around. <laughs> I tell you what though, the engine feels mighty on the road. It felt great on the track, but obviously when you've got Armco and trees and speed limits. Do they have speed limits in Spain? Can't remember. But let's pretend they do. Um, the engine <laughs> feels even more just outrageously responsive but when I hang on to it it wants to rev as well so you've got this lovely strong and predictable torque but it's worth revving out you get a reward if you chase the red line so what about other elements well the gearbox is good they've shortened up the final drive it is good actually it's really a nice auto they're never as good as a dual clutch box. Engineers will tell you till they're blue in the face that they're better, that they're lighter, that they have advantages. Because in this car, for example, the gearbox has always got a bit of positive torque. That keeps the car nice and balanced in uh, fast corners if you need a gear change. I understand all that, but you don't get bang, the snap and the response and the feeling of specialness that are really good dual clutch box will bring you it's not as good as a pdk box that probably won't be a surprise to anyone including aston development drivers and engineers when they watch this it's just not it's that benchmark is out of sight for them Perhaps unsurprisingly, the brakes also can't quite match a Porsche. They are consistent and powerful, but there's a little dead play at the top of the travel, and on track, even the optional carbon ceramics start to struggle against the 1,605 kilo dry weight. However, the Vantage feels on the money dynamically in nearly every respect, and the look, feel, and functionality of the interior is a different world to the old car. The glow of hand-built is often undermined by the wonkiness of, well, hand-built, but the new car gets it right. The infotainment system is good too, and there are even physical buttons for the major controls. Praise the Lord. So the interior is nice. The engine is mighty. The agility is good. This is a heavy car, but it just really changes direction nicely on the road. And I like that it has predictability but also edge like I don't want my 650 horsepower car to just be looking after me and nannying me the whole time this car gives you the tools but if you want to get stuck in it feels like a 650 horsepower supercar and under power the rear axle will start to hop under full noise it's impressive. It's more impressive on the road than the track, and it's fun on the track. Speaking of fun, there is one new feature I'd like to explore a bit more. So we've started to explore some of the technology in this car, and it really is a leap on from the old version. 
but there is one thing that I really want to check, and that is the adaptive traction control. We've seen systems like this before from BMW, McLaren, Ferrari even, but I want to see how it works on this. Effectively, you turn off the ESP, and then you can dial up and down the traction control to build the angle as you go along. As it happens, we have this rather lovely racetrack to ourselves, and we're going to use this corner, third gear. We're going to start off low, build up to uh, number eight, which is the very most lenient setting and see just how good it is. I will pretend to be a really, really terrible driver because obviously I'm brilliant um, and see if it works. The system defaults to position five when you deactivate stability control, but we'll start at level one. Let's try it. Third gear. basically zero movement so it's not cutting power horrendously you can feel that it's managing it but it just won't let the angle build so that's one let's wind it up to level five <laughs> that's actually pretty clever so it doesn't really want you to pitch it in, but once you get the tail moving with power, you can commit to the throttle and it just sort of holds the angle. That's, that's pretty impressive, okay. Next, we are gonna to dial to eight. So let's see if I can have a bigger angle, but a similar level of control. We have tyre smoke in level eight, so I would say that's a win. You would not want to try level eight if you've never done this before, but as a tool to build up to, that's great. And obviously there's one more level, level nine, which we will now try, also known as off. Adaptive traction control is a, it's a really nice way to get access to the full blood advantage experience, but obviously you can't be just turning everything off and finding out just how good the balance is. So let's do that, we've got plenty of power, it's a lovely track, and you can just turn this thing in on the brakes. And that talks a bit of the accuracy of the platform control that I've talked about before. The car just feels really smooth going over the limit of grip and then coming back, even in track mode, which I'm in now. So really stiff and aggressive, but the car is just easy to handle all the time. You've got this really cool character that the electronics give you support to enjoy and indulge in. And then you can turn it up to, well, it's nine, but you can turn it up to 11 when you've got the confidence and the space to just pitch it in and feel that natural balance. <laughs> it's pretty sweet. Criticisms. On the track, the, the gear shift indicator is criminally small. It's actually pathetic. You can't see it at all. And that just seems ridiculous when you've got a car with this much potential. It is a heavy car. You can't get away from that. But overall, the entertainment and the indulgence, this is fourth gear. Just easy to handle. It's really pretty good fun. And I think <laughs> Yeah, I mean they've done a lovely job just making sure this car is easy to handle but has 
the character, the sort of lunatic, hairy chested character if you want it, but in this really controlled way. Is it a 911 Turbo? No, it's a different car altogether. And it doesn't have the 911 Turbo's unbelievable speed on a track. Uh, and it doesn't feel as small, as light and as accurate. But it's got its own character and it doesn't feel off the pace, which Aston have in the past felt a little off the pace. They're having to make a lot of sacrifice in order to have that badge. Well, now I think they realise that's not how you go about building a car that people want. It has to be right. And they've put in a great effort to do it and the result is impressive. I like this thing, it's fun. So I have been really impressed by this Vantage on the track and on the road. It's got a really clear identity, sense of integrity, and this cohesiveness as well. It's just a really good fun thing. Now, is it faster than a 911 Turbo as agile on the racetrack? Absolutely not. Can it cover ground as quickly on the road? Again, no. But I do think it's a Vantage that we don't need to make excuses for. Now, is it more fun than the 911 Turbo on the road? You know what, I think it might be. You can't really do much more than that. <laughs>